Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. If you are a new subscriber, you are welcome to subscribe to the channel. When you do, it gives you access to my community page. On the community page is where, when it comes to my attention, I share snippets and articles and revelations that the Lord is giving me to show that his prophecies are true and consistent. Everything that you watch in these videos can be found on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. There is a website. It is www.the-masters-voice.com. And you're better off trying to use a browser like Firefox or something else that is not Safari or Google, unless you might have time landing exactly on the blog. We are in a time where the Lord has been giving me prophecies concerning money and changes that will come to America's money in particular. And why is this important? Because much of the world economy hangs on American money, the U.S. dollar. Much of the world's economy is firmly latched onto the U.S. economy. And so God is giving these prophecies not just for the United States, but for all nations around the world. Why? Primarily because America's supremacy has come to an end. People will hear this and strongly defer and say, no, but Bloomberg said this and Time Magazine said this. On this channel, I'm speaking from God's perspective. And God says that he has already judged America. He has already removed America from her position of rulership. She is no longer the head nation with God. The prophecies that I have brought in the past, especially in the America series, clearly show that God has judged the United States for a large gamut of sin. And what we are going to be seeing from here on out is the progressive nature of how prophecy comes to life before our eyes. God makes a decision on high in heaven. He says faulty, or he says guilty, or he says forgiven, or he says, I receive your repentance. And then after that, you will see in the real world down here in what we call the natural, that's where you're going to see the end of things play out. But when God makes a decision up there, it's not going to fall on us like lightning. And that is because I always remind us that God is just and God is firm, but God is also merciful and has grace. The difference in America's case is that God says he will show this nation no more grace he is never going to remove her sins from before his face. The end of America, whether you can accept it or not accept it, is to fall from supremacy, to fall into gradual decline. Basically, God has said that we will sit here and see everything good and beautiful about this country become worn and torn and old and shredded and corrupted and then horrible and evil and scary and supernatural until creatures are walking around on the surface of this nation and everything that made it great is gone. So when people are defiant against God, when people are saying they're going to build back better, when people are saying they're going to make America great again, that means that the nation is acting exactly like Israel did in the Old Testament. When God told them to go into the promised land, they said no. They said, we're scared of the giants and we're scared of this and we're scared of that and we're not going. They refused to obey God's instructions. And so God put a judgment on them and he said, everyone under the age of 20 is going to die on this side of the promise. You're never going to see the promised land. When they heard that, they began to mourn and weep. And then they said, oh, no, 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 Moses, you know what? We have had a change of heart. We now believe God. We now repent. We will go into the land. And Moses told them, God has already judged you. If you try to go and take the promised land now, the blessing has lifted off of you. The anointing is no longer with you. It is the anointing Israel that always makes you win battles. But God has taken away the anointing from you. You are now rejected and there is a curse upon you that he said he will not shift. They didn't listen. They went and tried to do battle in the promised land. They slaughtered them and only a few of them were able to come running back. And then they sat mourning and what kicked in their 
40 years of judgment. So when God says he has judged a country and that country is no longer going to be in the top spot, and then the people say, well, we'll, we're getting together at the Council of Foreign Relations and we're getting together at the White House and the Brown House and all the houses, and we're going to make the country great again. We're going to MAGA this ship back on course because we liked the way it was before November, 2020. Then all that country is doing is saying that it's going to go into the promised land no matter what God says. It's going to go and fight no matter what God says. And all that will happen is what always happens. Destruction, decline, and then a small footnote in the history books. Here lie the stubborn people. Today's prophecy is called the nascent rise of coin. And it was quite a revelation to me because this is not an area of information that I follow. This coin thing that people are so wrapped up in, um, Bitcoin, and I think one of them is called Eurythrium. I might be wrong. And the one that crashed XRP. In 2014, the Lord spoke to me about all this kind of money that exists in the cloud and simply told me, that is beast money, Celestial, and you should have nothing to do with it because the FBI are on the other side of it. And so, as I shared in one of the recent videos, that was enough for me as far back as 2014 when I first heard about people mining coin, getting computers to mine coin, and it was just very confusing to me, and I have never been a part of it because once God tells me something, even it, if it was almost 10 years ago, once the Lord tells me something is something, I don't need to go and test it out to see if it really is something. I'm content to leave it alone because even if it takes 50 years, it will always turn into what he said. This prophecy I received after two very graphic and concerning dreams. And this prophecy is threaded to so many other messages that I will have to do my best. I made a small list here, and I hope that I can marry this recent message to things that I have been talking about since one of the oldest is 2016. He just highlighted so many things in this message. So let's go into it. If you pay attention to the prophecy dates, you will notice something about God. Once God gets going on a topic, he's just going to keep bringing back that topic from different angles, different perspectives, showing me different parts of it until if you look at all the prophecies about that one thing, it presents a wonderful whole. And what is happening here is that we are no longer going to have paper money and physical cash that we can hold in our hand. The last prophecy about the meltdown of the banks, the Lord said at the end that money is going away and we are going inevitably. This means as long as you are alive, walking around on two legs in any part of the world, you are going to end up in a world without cash anymore. And he said that once we go into that world, which is the beast system, the new world order, he said that we will never be able to go back to the way things were. And so he's clear and he's consistent. The word nascent means just coming into existence, just beginning to display signs of future potential. It means coming or having recently come into existence, something that is beginning to develop. And so that's why he used the word to describe this new type of coin that is coming out. Another way that you can simply put the word nascent, especially when it comes to the B system, is rising. Something is rising. It's beginning to come to the surface, but we can't yet fully see what it is. And so when I woke up, here are the notes that I recorded, and then I will give the dream. When I woke up from the dreams, the Lord said, the financial collapse is imminent. And that means that soon currency will start to lose its value. Money will fall. Americans will lose confidence in their own dollar and they will start hoarding goods and other forms of currency to hedge against the crash. You will know that money is losing value when the cost of goods becomes impossible to keep up with. When the same money that used to buy a set amount of value is unable to purchase that value anymore. Value will plummet in the US dollar and people will transition over to other means of trading 
but it will not last long. So God says that we're going to lose confidence in the U.S. dollar, and I think we can already start to see that as other countries have just decided not to care about what the White House press secretary's threats are from day to day, administration to administration, and they have started trading with the big enemy Russia and China in commensurate currency. So they've started to trade major goods. I think India is one, and I think Iran is another, and... Perhaps there are more, but I'm not aware of those others that are basically trading things like oil and gas in their own currency with these countries and not relying on the U.S. dollar at all. That's as far as my daylight or my human knowledge goes. So God is saying that here at home, when the money starts to fail, the first sign of it is that the currency will lose value. That's basically inflation. He says that people will start hoarding goods People have already been doing that for quite a while, but the goods hoarding will be very strong because the money is losing value and the same things that people used to buy with the, maybe with a hundred dollars, you can no longer buy the same amount of goods with that same hundred dollars. And so that will be the first sign when value starts plummeting. And then he says more and more people are going to transition over to other forms of trading other forms of currency, but that will not last long. And I emphasize this point in the written prophecy that it will not last long. Why? Because this is proof that all of God's word must be fulfilled. God's word is not going to be partially fulfilled, somewhat fulfilled. It's going to be fully fulfilled. And in the book of Ezekiel, I think it's chapter seven and verse 19, it says that we are not going to be allowed to put trust in gold and silver that it will be cast away from end times people as an unclean thing. It will be thrown on the ground and it will be trampled under our feet because it became the stumbling block of our iniquity. If you want to understand what that means, please watch the video that I put up yesterday that is called um, Meltdown of the Banking System. It's a few days ago and there that verse was very well explained. The Lord told me that coin digital currency is on the way. It is not the physical coins that people are buying. These physical coins made of silver and gold will be cast away eventually. They will only be a temporary form of trading. Temporary means just for a little bit to hedge the gap between when money becomes useless, money that we know now, banks, bank accounts and cash and coins, and the time that they will implement this new thing whatever it will be. Um, So this is digital money. It will be coins that are only in the computer. You know, when when you go to play video games, you put your physical money in from this world and it turns into these little coins in the game. And then you can use your coins to buy life. And I think people are even doing online gambling like that. So it's computer coin. You will never be able to withdraw this money from any ATMs. ATMs will become a thing of the past because they're trying to move us into a world where we are scanning with the palm and scanning with the eye and things like that. And so you can't, you will not need to go to an ATM and get money. You will be paying with the phone first or paying with the watch. And then later they want to integrate the financial tech into the body. So people will listen to these prophecies and say, oh, I can't follow that woman or I can't listen. You don't have to follow me because I'm not asking anyone to follow me. This channel is here for God to wake humanity up. Whether you are saved humanity, Islamic humanity, you're following another religion. God wants you to understand that in the end, you will be forced to acknowledge him as God because no prophet in your religion and no prophet anywhere in this world can match the words from God's own mouth. There is no spiritual leader who has lived or died, who has been able to speak what the Bible says. End times prophecy, praise Jesus, stands alone. It has no equal, no friends, no, no, nobody else in the building. It is God all day long. And the things that he is saying here, no matter how fantastical they seem, no matter how stressful on your heart they may seem, you will end up in them anyway, as long as you are living long enough, you will end up in them. So you can go, if you are a true Christian, his spirit will always bring you back here. 
because you will have to develop absorbency. You will have to become a sponge that is no longer hard, but damp and pulling in this truth of God because you will have to live through it. And it is time that you strengthen the foundation and got ready to do so. The whole point of many of these prophecies is to tell us that Revelation chapter 13, it is surely going to happen. We are going to end up in that world. And in that world, there rules a beast. There rules a kingdom that seeks to corrupt the physical body of man so that God won't accept us when we die. If you go and integrate your identification for work into your eye and your payment method into your hand and your cell phone into your other hand that you simply have to wave your hand next to your ear and your call connects, you may be all good down here in that world, but you will never enter heaven because heaven is not a place for desecrated objects. A person who is not a person a person who has gone and hybridized themselves, a woman who has gone and laid down with a Nephilim and allowed her womb to bring out a Nephilim child, you're not getting into heaven. So these are end times decisions that we, listening to prophecy now, are making for then. I will not be online then. I will be figuring it out with the Holy Ghost just like everybody else will be. I'm online now to prepare you for then. May God receive the glory. And so these coins will be the only currency that exists. A form of money, God says, that will tie everything about us into one digital footprint. And that digital footprint will be online and it will be monitored 24 hours a day. Digital money will be the order of the day. And God says that using cash will decline sharply once this money comes online. The reasons he gave is because he said people are very open-minded nowadays, very liberal, very adventurous, willing to try new things very quickly without even researching it enough. And we saw that happen in 2020. They bring a new thing and everyone is like, great, let's take this new thing that we don't know what it's going to do to us in even five years. People will be open to this new form because it will be expedient, convenience. Anytime you tell people this will shave eight more seconds off your 18 second activity, they're like, yes, why not? Why not put the cell phone in my hand? Because it's so much hard work to press the green button. Sign me up, put the phone in my hand. I'll wave my hand by my ear. It's eight seconds faster than picking up a call. This is what people will sell their physical bodies and souls for. An electronic bowl of Esau's soup. He says that people will rush to take it because they will be open to it. But he also said that there is going to be a hard impact to cash, meaning that something will be done to weaken general confidence in cash and they will also use different methods to strong arm, to force cash off the market completely. So you've got the people, the open-minded bunch and the casual bunch, all the influencers on the different places that are like, oh my goodness, I just signed up for my digital this and that. And now look, I can flick my way through Amazon. But then you have this hard impact being done from upstairs he says that cash will be forced off the scenes because the people in power are going to force all of America's biggest business and biggest, most integrated suppliers into our daily lives. I'm talking about the supermarket, the hospital, the laundromat, every place that your life needs to be. They will be told not to use cash and not to accept it at all. So you still have these places you can go, you can still pull the money out of your wallet and pay. Major retailers are going to flatly refuse cash. And they already tried that a little bit last year by saying, oh, we don't have coins. So if you pay with cash, we can't give you any change. Even if your change is $12.97, we're going to keep that whole 97 cents because we don't have change. You can avoid this by using your card. They started to say that it didn't have change. They started to shut down the coin changing machines in a lot of places. 
God says that they will completely force cash off the scene by telling most of the major businesses, don't use it, don't accept it. And he said, they're also going to use something called separation. The minute I explain separation, you're going to real you're going to recognize it from a few years ago. Separation is where you create classes by offer. You create separate classes by simply having offers. So you will offer incredible benefits and gifts and rebates and special value to whoever follows this rule, not using cash. And then you're going to use painful methods and different forms of economic punishment to isolate the people who won't switch from paying with their bank card and paying with cash. Incentives might be giving people half off the price of their grocery if they refuse to use cash or card and switch over to coin. You might give them 40% off a new car if they use coin, but if they come in to pay with their bank account or they come in to pay with cash, then you charge them the full price of the car plus all the taxes and you even impose more penalties on them because of the method of payment that they choose. The normal bank account that relies on ATMs, that gives you user privacy, that gives you a PIN that, don't, that not even the bank employees know, and that gives you the ability to withdraw cash without having to go into a branch or to even close your account anytime you feel like it, God says that is going away soon. And all we will have is something called a coin wallet that does not convert to cash. You cannot pull coin into the real world. You have to use it where it is, and it will only retain value where it is inside the computer. And the Lord was telling me, my daughter, life is being transferred into machines. Soon you will be asked to do everything in there. Eat, sleep, go to the hospital, learn, make love. Basically, God says that we will live inside a virtual reality instead of having a real life outside with people, hobbies, and green grass under your feet. Here is the first dream. I dreamt that I lived in a very nice suburb that is not in New York City. I was somewhere else in a really nice neighborhood with those wide streets, with the deliberate tree lines pointed on the side so that the whole street is shady and everything, and there was even neighborhood patrol. And I woke up one early, early one morning and I was standing by the window and I was just standing by the window, not doing anything in particular. I was just looking out at the street. It was too early. Nobody was up moving around outside. And then suddenly comes a knocking at my door. And I was thinking, I'm, I'm not opening that door. It's, it's not even a polite hour to come to somebody's house. I'm not opening that door. I don't want to deal with anyone right now. But the knocking continued. And then the neighbor began to call my voice, call my name. Celestial, Celestial, honey, honey, open the door. Celestial, honey, open the door on and on. And her tone kept rising and rising. And so I finally went to open the door. The second I opened this door, this woman flew into my arms and grabbed me. This is my neighbor, an older woman, maybe in her mid '60s. She just came into my arms and just grabbed me up and just kept saying, "Oh, you, you sweet girl, you were right. You were right. They're doing everything you said. They're rounding us up. We're getting out." And she called her husband's name and nodded out the door towards an SUV, a gray SUV that was already parked in the street with a trailer hooked onto it, with the engine running. So the husband didn't even come in to say goodbye. He was just being the man of the hour, prepped and ready to go. They had a gray SUV, trailer hooked up, and here was the woman who had probably said, I'm not leaving without telling this girl goodbye. So she came in and she hugged me and she told me, we're leaving. I know you said that you wouldn't leave, but think about it, Celestia. Don't linger too long. Don't stay here too long, sweetheart. You don't know what they might do to you. And she squeezed me one last time, and then she just darted out the door, got into the car, slammed, and the minute that woman slammed the, the door, her husband went down the street. Early morning, he didn't care about the, the tire marks or the squealing, he was gone. They pulled off so fast, I thought that the trailer would disengage itself from the SUV. And as soon as they went out, I went outside to stand on my lawn, just in amazement 
at what had just happened. And the second my feet hit that grass, I found myself up in the air looking at America from the beginning and all I saw across the nation. I was no longer in a city. I was living somewhere in the suburbs. But what I saw across the nation is panic, chaos, and pandemonium everywhere. I will pause for a moment and I will, all, I will only say this. The reason that the end times are going to hit America in this particular way, panic, chaos, pandemonium, is because people in this country are hardened and they are full of unbelief. You tell them that God is going to set a fire here and they look in your face and they tell you Maranatha. They tell you, be it unto you, celestial. If that's where your faith is, that you believe you're going to live all through all this, you must be one of the sinning left behind. And so there's this cognitive dissonance here that God loves this country so much that he couldn't possibly do anything. And as a result, there's like perhaps a tenth of a quarter of an inch of prepared people. And the rest are like lemmings going about their daily lives, completely oblivious because some of them live in total denial of God. They're oblivious to what is coming. And then the larger mass of people who do call themselves Christians indulge in lemonade, sugar, lemonade stand Christianity. They do not believe a single thing of the end times refers to them. And so how can we not have panic? How can we not have chaos and pandemonium when the things that God is warning us about happen? Nobody will be prepared except for the early morning people who listened to me, the next door neighbor, to me, the regular face on YouTube and thought, Maybe there's something to this. Perhaps I should listen. I saw people evacuating from all the cities of America. I saw the Golden Gate Bridge. God didn't show me New York. I saw California, the Golden Gate Bridge with the huge hanging structures, that iconic global design. Traffic was not moving an inch on that bridge. It was gridlocked both ways. I saw that cars were backed up on all the freeways in this nation. And they were stuffed with every earthly possession you can find in them. Kids, food, documents, pets, cash, and other things that people didn't want to leave behind. Yet in many cases, I also saw that these cars held unbelievable wealth. Coins, the coins that we know, gold coins, silver coins, if they come in any other type of, maybe there's plutonium coins, I don't know. But if they come like that, then those coins were there. I saw bouillon gold bouillon. I saw gold items, silver. I saw metals in these cars, precious stones, silverware, and many other types of non-commercial currency. Non-commercial currency might be stocks. It might be bonds. It might be jewelry. It might be um, heirloom pieces that are worth a great deal and things like that. Property and title deeds also are this kind of wealth that is called non-commercial. People were fleeing across America to avoid having their wealth and their possessions confiscated by the government. I did not say come under attack by random thieves, confiscated by the government. But the strange thing is that as I watched the different places, San Francisco was the only place that in my heart I had understanding this is, this is the Golden Gate Bridge in California. The strange thing is that people are scattering across the country. They were fleeing for the borders, make no mistake. They weren't going to grandma's house. People were about to hit the borders and I will get to it. The government or someone who had an emergency broadcast system seemed to know who was in the cars, what they had in terms of wealth and when they had gotten this wealth. I heard citizens' names being broadcast in a non-stop loop, meaning people were just being named one after another after another, and they were being named along with what they had done to convert their normal wealth, this is cash and bank money, into the kind of wealth that they were now fleeing with, the tangible things, the, the silver coins and the gold coins and things like that. And in fact, this phenomenon of the emergency broadcast voice started with my neighbor as she and her husband were fleeing up that quiet street that morning i heard a voice say julie so and so from xyz place fleeing with 
ABC worth of coins, bonds, bouillon, and so forth in the trunk and trailer. And I was flabbergasted. First of all, the voice. Was it a voice that only I was hearing? Or was this a voice that was broadcasting into the, the air and everyone could hear it? The, the next thing that shocked me was the sheer amount of what this woman and her husband had in the car. These people were as ordinary as you want. They'd be out on the porch, she's on the porch, and he's mowing the grass, and they're waving, hi, Celestial, and I had no idea that I was living next to millionaires. I couldn't process what this, this aerial voice was saying, that that trailer that was racing out of our neighborhood hooked up to that car was actually hauling Fort Knox behind it. This loudspeaker kept broadcasting relentlessly, rapid fire, one name after another, and my two ears just could not process the amount of wealth that this emergency broadcast system was talking about. The people jammed on the freeway, those who were being named among them. Some people probably just had their cat and a bit of kitty litter and like $500 in their sock. But some of the people that I was looking down on when I was in the air were carrying what I can only call heavy hitter resources. Not every car had them, but the ones that had them. This announcer kept talking about where the person bought the gold, bought the silver, and how much they had bought. And I was getting nervous because I was thinking, doesn't, isn't this going to cause vigilante behavior? Because I'm sure that all the opportunists all the vigilante guys, all the gangland guys are listening. If this is an audible voice for everyone to hear, then won't these guys just go to the cars that are being named and start to rob people in hopes of striking it rich? I saw that America was, <clears throat> excuse me, please. I saw that America was disrupted. And here's why. Some kind of rule, some kind of law that directly touched and impacted personal property and ownership had gone live in this country. And when people heard it, notice, nobody said, I'm calling my lawyer and we'll get to the bottom of this. No, we had reached a point in this country where people now knew what the government was like. The government will pull off its mask in America. And all the people who think that I'm talking crazy town will realize that after they take the money, they're going to come for physical bodies and they're going to do to them exactly what I said in the prophecy pogroms. I will link that prophecy at the bottom and you can go and read it, hold your stomach and hear what God is saying that the people in power will do. A law went live that directly impacted personal property. And when that law goes live, you will understand what they mean when they say you will have nothing and be happy. What they mean is that you will have nothing and we will be happy. We will have everything and we will be happy. People fled for the borders with everything they owned, whatever they could carry, and they abandoned their homes as a lost cause. And I saw the American government take over everything that they left. The government confiscated homes, boats, golf clubs, fur coats, businesses, everything these people left behind because they designated those people as renegades. They gave them a new classification and that new classification made it okay and legal for the government to confiscate everything that they have. A renegade is defined as a person who rejects lawful and orderly conventional behavior. People who desert and betray an organization, a clearly defined set of principles, or a country. The U.S. government declared its own citizens to be renegades, treasonous, and with that new law, everything that those people owned could be seized and frozen by the government. It was sequestering people's property, seizing it, seizing it physically, and saying that the people had forfeit all their goods. That's because traditionally renegades don't have the right to own anything. You have no right to own personal property, and so that's what the government was saying. You first became an enemy of the state. They publicly put your name on blast, and then they went and attached everything that you own the Lord was showing me that the government will greatly enrich itself at the expense of ordinary Americans. 
by declaring, this is a new thing that they will do separate from what I just said, declaring people renegade and taking their stuff. They're also going to make laws in this country that says that certain assets are illegal. And you as a single property owner, whether you're married or single, they will say that you simply can't have that. I am quoting what God said. They will tell you, you can't have that. It's too much for you. It has to be redistributed and shared fairly. I know that all the people from Yugoslavia, if you are from Russia or any other country watching this video and you lived under communism, you know everything about redistribution of wealth and sharing fairly. Americans have never heard these things. They are only history lessons. And so the, the hearts, the heart rates are going to go right up to here that the prophecy that God gave me two years ago, that this country is going to be communist, terrorist, statist, futurist, socialist, everything he said, it is going to become an amalgam in one nation. It will be the most horrible brew that we have ever drunk. And that will be the punishment for the sins that have been, been committed here without stoppage. They will say that what you have is too much for you. They will set a cap on how much property a person can have and what kind of property a person can have and how much personal resources and money. And they will tell you it's going to be redistributed and shared fairly. And what I saw is the place is going to be shared fairest is among them who, in, who are in power and their friends. I saw them, their friends, the in crowd, they took all the goods and they shared it among themselves and the original property owner will not get anything for it. You will not be repaid for your land that they possess, your property, your mining rights, or anything they take from you. Because after they make laws saying it's illegal for you to have it, they have the right to take it. And if you flee with what you can carry, anything that you leave behind will be called forfeit. And when I woke up, God was telling me that the time is coming when Americans are going to greatly flee into South America and territories all over the world to preserve their lives. Notice at this point, he didn't say your property. He said people will run away out of this country just to save their lives. And in a short time, he said the demographics of many countries that are around America and even further afield are going to be completely changed he said South America will go from being black to white in a short time, and it will become an end times melting pot because of the severe pressures that are coming to the U.S. population. And I slept, and I had another dream. In that dream, I arrived at a house where the atmosphere was exactly like a funeral a somber and heavy atmosphere, but the house itself was warm. And the people who were welcoming us, who were coming in with all our worldly possessions were so kind. They were showing us where we could put our bags down, where we could get food, where we could get provisions. So I started wandering around this house because I didn't have anything. I just came by myself. And I saw people that I know, and I saw one woman in particular that I know who truly loves the Lord. And she was sitting on the ground on, on, when you come in, you're on the ground floor and it's such a wide and a big house. But as I later found out, the house had stories going up and going down. She was just there on the ground floor and she had found a piece of wall and she was trying to make her two daughters com comfortable. She was feeding them and she was trying to get them settled for bed. And it came into my heart that bed was going to be right there where they were sitting. They were going to sleep right where they were sitting. And I couldn't figure out at first what this house was. All I saw was people coming in with what was left of their possessions. They were being welcomed, they were being helped to settle in, in this big house that had hardly any furniture, but at least it was warm and there was a sense of comfort in the house. There was food, there were coordinators who tried to make things run smoothly and they never raised their voice, but if someone was acting out of line, or you know how people, people will really show their bad attitude. People will really show how unsubmitted and how um, with, with such poor character they are in the end times. When people started to act out, maybe because of fear or stress, the coordinators just calmly said, you can't do that here. And they were able to keep things in line. You just came in with what you had and you got some food and you sat down and you tried to find yourself a little corner. And I saw that everybody was just trying to settle in and not think too much. 
So as I was walking around this house, I came to a massive hole in the middle of the house. And that's what made me know that this house had a downstairs and an upstairs. I saw so many stories, so many floors below the main floor that I thought this is where the house starts. It's just maybe foundation and basement, but no, there were tons of stories that made it look like we were in a high rise. And as I looked into that hole, this amazing blast furnace of heat hit me. You know, when, when you, when you come into contact with hot air and it waters your eyes because your eyes protectively make water to protect themselves from that much heat. And I almost passed out when I was looking into that hole because it was such a dizzying drop below. And yet in that boiling hot heat down there, I saw people wandering around down there in very thin gray blankets. And they were just so aimless and they were so sad and just milling around like sheep that didn't know what to do. And I thought, oh my goodness, there are people in that hole. And that's when I realized that us who were here at the ground floor and everyone who was still above were the ones who had survived. This is the understanding that came into me that you celestial and these people here coming in and bringing their goods and trying to settle in and being told you can sleep here on the second floor and you can stay here. You survived. You are the ones who are on the floors of this great building that still worked. You are the ones who were saved. And I have shared several dreams on this channel where I said that sometimes when God is showing me the world, he will represent it by a very tall building where each person's room, that's your life, that's your world. And I shared a dream where I said that I saw the sky crack open and creatures, a form of death, a black shape that had no body came into the world and began to kill people. And I ran into my building and into my room and I found a ton of strangers, not a single person that I know sheltering in my room because they were not able to keep themselves safe in their room. Why? Because their roots, their spiritual roots, their faith, it didn't go down deep enough, but they knew we know somebody in this building who has faith. We know somebody in this building who has God. And so when they saw that thing coming, I was outside observing the sky and wondering why day and night were the same. It was dark in that dream. The sun had stopped rising. It was dark in the day. It was dark in the night. They had brought some fake kind of sunlight that they were trying to use to light the world. And it was not working. No sun, no moon, no stars. And then all of a sudden the sky cracks and this evil thing came into the world. And I'm running back to my room thinking, well, let me get back there. And, and friends and family, meaning just their friends and family, were in my room huddled together. They didn't want to stay in their room. God will show me the world as a building. Your room is your life. What are you doing in that room? How are you preparing in that room? Are you just in that room, just sweating buckets? Every time the channel has a notification, your heart rate is out off the roof. You've been here six months, a year. What is the value of this hard work for you? Is it changing you? Is it challenging you? Are you growing? Are you deepening your trust in God? Or are these things just smashing your weak foundation already? And I said, what a pity to die twice. You die inside when you hear the word of the Lord. And then when it starts happening for real, you're dying all over again because you have not gone to the weakened structure to learn how to build up your faith. This building collapsed when the economic hardship came. The bottom fell out. Literally, that is what this dream means. The second dream, the bottom fell out. A huge hole appeared and tons of people on the lower floors. They, they might not have been lower floors because they're poor. Lower floors because there was no faith. There was no foundation. There was no Jesus. There was only playing with the Xbox and hanging out on Instagram and sliding into girls' DMs and being proud of your six degrees, your master's master's, and your doctrine doctorate. I know what it's called. No building up of the heart, no clinging to the robes of Jesus. The bottom dropped out. Daily life became crazy and a ton of people fell into the roaring furnace that will be 1933 all over again.
the greater Great Depression than 1933, a crash that America will never recover from, a nation so weak that God has put in my mouth to say in the old prophecies that we will require food aid here. We of the endless United Nations ads, for just a dollar a day, you can feed an African. For just a dollar a day, you can feed this person. Spain is going to send ships here. The EU is going to send humanitarian aid here. That is what God showed me, that we will need food. We will need blankets. We will need medicines. The ships came and they docked off the New York Harbor. And I was watching and saying, God, is this America? And he said, yes, they will require aid. They will require the same helping hand that they've been given, giving all their lives because poverty, I will tenderize them with poverty. I will boil them in the pot of my judgments until they become soft and tender and fall off the bone. These people fell into the hole. And as I was looking at them, I was thinking perhaps I should go down there. I should do something. But I was terrified because the drop was dizzying. And as I was trying to move towards the hole, I saw there was a ladder, such a spindly ladder, such a thin, thin, thin ladder going down into the depths, down to where those people were. And I was thinking, well, maybe I, I can be brave enough to get on the ladder. And I heard the voice of the lady, the friend that I know. And she said to me, don't go near that hole, Celestial. Do not put your foot on that ladder. Only the men go down there. Occasionally, my husband and some of the other men, they go down that ladder in single file and they go down there to try and help, but they can only go one by one because that ladder is so weak. Don't even get near that hole. Come away. And I was relieved when I heard her speak because I am one of those people who can recognize the voice of God coming out of people's mouths. I don't need to ask them, well, what makes you say that? Because when a person says something that makes sense, I'm able to recognize sense. And so I came away from the hole and I went and sat down to make sense of what, it, what had happened. And these are the two prophecies that the Lord has given me. This prophecy was received on March the 2nd. It is two dreams that I had back to back and it is called the nascent rise of coin the coming of a new world order that will introduce itself to us here in America by taking away money, the ability to open out your cash and pull out a few bills and pay for a meal and tip the waitress in cash if you want to. There are countries around the world that are no stranger to the online wallet. Kenya has it, Nigeria has it, Liberia has it. Indonesia has it, Malaysia has it, the Philippines have it, I think the Indians have it. Zimbabwe definitely has it. Zimbabwe's had it for years. This online wallet in these countries is current beta testing of the beast system. The people who are in charge of implementing and bringing Satan's dreams to pass know that if you go to a place like America and try to tell people that you are going to establish an online currency and that you want them to use it concurrently with their bank accounts and cash, the majority of people who have always been able to reach into their back pocket for what they want, go to the ATM for what they want, are simply going to ignore this. America is a terrible place to beta test anything because we never go along with anything. And that is why everything will come down on us the hardest. This is the only country that is going to enter the new world order, kicking and screaming under terrorism from within its borders to make us afraid, harsh rules to make us comply, the breaking, shredding, and smashing of the constitution, amendment by amendment, line by line, brick by brick, because no one will ever obey unless they have to under a boot or at the point of a gun. So the beta testing has taken place outside where people simply think, well, this is convenience. And some of the countries have not even known that they were being beta tested, but beta tested they were. Coin has been introduced into America nefariously through Bitcoin and XRJ and whatever it is. And people think, oh, this is an option that I'm trading. It lets you actually feel that you have some control 
over the money. And because we like to feel that we have control, those who play in the world of cloud money have completely missed the common sense that you can't touch this money. You can only trade it. And every time the money tanks, all your faces go like this as you watch the 12 million that the money, the screen told you you had turn to $12. And then you feel a little bit helpless because now the money's trapped in there. Just like when the ATM swallows your bank card on a Sunday night and you can't get it back. Now you have to sit there like a trained puppy and wait and hope that the Bitcoin and the coin coin will creep back enough for you to quickly rush and try and get some value out of it. And even though it's been rising and falling and rising and falling like somebody's chest that has asthma, you can't learn the lesson because greed, greed keeps you in that world. Let me wait a little bit and I can trade it back up. One day you will wake up and your Bitcoin, Smitcoin balance will say zero, zero. And you will be in the world of universal coin money. And that is what greedy people get. This is the word of the Lord. The nascent rise of coin, March 2. A new world is coming, a world that is going to have a single religion with the beast saying that he is God. Read the Bible. A world that is going to have a single currency. It's going to have these people. I searched very hard to find a coin that didn't have a private company's logo on it, but I couldn't. I found that even China has this digital money, something called a digital yuan. So I guess... It's just us. Other people are playing with online wallets and here the online wallets are made to look private, but they are actually all government run. And one day even that will come out and then everybody will know what God told me in 2014. When you're playing with Bitcoin and online money, the FBI is sitting on the other side of that cash. I decided to go with this picture because these will be the custodians of the new world order a kind of police that will be even more decked out than SWATs, wearing helmets that have comms in there, and not all of them will be people. God has revealed that they're going to use something called chimeras in the end days, wolfman, dogman, other types of predator type thing bred with people. They might not necessarily be hairy on the outside. They might look like people, but they have the ability to morph and bring out that other nature. Quite dangerous. Able to see without the special ops glasses. Able to scent, prey, and target. Able to target people based on DNA tracking ability alone. Able to strip down in a team of only six Marines. And once the humans get to the point where it's too dangerous, they will send Wolfman by himself and he can go and take out an entire bunker of people by himself but, and come back unharmed and then grow off his fur and be naked. It's 2023 and I'm telling us the world that will come. God says that these end time soldiers are extremely pricey. It costs a lot of money to get one because what one of them can do, an entire team of Alpha Bravo, Alpha Gamma Ray guys, special forces can do. They are very expensive. The new world order is not for the faint of heart. And God is warning Read Matthew 24 and pay attention to the order of events and let me know what verse finally says, then he will send his angels. I'll help you. It's verse 31. What verse does he start to list the signs of the times? It's verse five. Can you tell me what you think is happening to the church between 20, between verse five and verse 31? That's 26 verses that people continue to blind their eyes to and say, no, not my Jesus. May God bless you. I thank all of you that support me here at The Master's Voice. The best support you can give me is to go to the blog and read these prophecies for yourself. I will watch this video back and try to see the ones 
that I mentioned, and then I will also leave helpful links, like the link to pogroms, that the government will just be creating false crimes here. In fact, I listed one prophecy here, and by the grace of God, I think I'll read it. The government will just come up with false crimes and harm people. The government will just come up with lies and hurt people. Just a moment. They will create new categories of crimes and then they will arrest people under those crimes. You will not be able to get access to a lawyer. Um, the judiciary is going to be either a kangaroo court that agrees with any charges that the executive brings against you. Um, all laws are going to be made from one centralized place. There will be no interactive lawmaking process. Basically, all the checks and balances that exist in a free and fair and um, democratic society to keep the citizens safe will go away. And that is why the dream that I just read showed that when people saw how obvious the, go the, the government was being about property grab, money grab, gold grab, they basically just hit the hills. They hit, I saw people by road in this vision, in this dream, I did not see any airports because Actually, God is wise. It makes sense. People who are carrying bouillon and carrying diamond necklaces cannot get through the airport. There is a limit on how much of that stuff you can, you can carry before it's flagged. But by road, you and your trailer and the dog and your husband, you can carry as much as you want, I guess, especially if you know the back roads. So I will end by integrating this prophecy here. April 27, 2021. And it is called A New Government for America, The Iron Kingdom Rises. And God says, um, there will arise over America a dark government, a wicked government that flows like a torrent. It means a raging flood from one side of the continent to the other. A dark cloud is coming over the country and soon it will be revealed from the left from the left of America, destruction comes. A dark, dirty wave of your own wickedness will overtake you and you will fall prey to the multiple idols and abominations that you allowed to take over my land. You will be ruled by cruel rulers and then you will know my repayment for your sin is giving you what you wanted. Speak now, tell them what I say a mighty government unlike any that has ever been before it, a wicked, divisive, and cruel government will rule you, a government that creates deadly schemes against its own people, a government that puts people to death, a government that uses dark sayings and multiple realities until you become exhausted and confused about which one to believe. This is an evil leadership coming and none will escape its claws. Both the righteous and the unrighteous will be affected as a new world and a new world order rises to power in America. This is the word of the Lord. The righteous and the unrighteous will see it. Therefore call upon the Lord and be saved. Your freedoms and civil liberties are at an end your privacy will be stripped away by the growth of the state's power and everything will be sacrificed to peace and safety. You will hear, for the safety of all of you, you cannot do this and that anymore. For the safety of all of you, you cannot own this and that anymore. Prepare to be made naked, America. Your rights will be removed and you will be exposed. Hidden riches will be uncovered. The government is literally going to hunt for people's stuff, exactly as I said. Hidden riches will be uncovered and the state will shine a light into every corner to know what every man has. A crown of hardness is coming into office and with it, every abomination shall overflow within the borders of America. You want to sleep with kids? This new government is going to say, well, they understand your feelings and they're going to make room for that. First, they will say it's kids who want to, older kids and then younger kids. And then why should we leave out the babies? Let the babies also have free and fair choice as to a sexual partner. Every abomination means that if a man 
buys a human-sized walking, talking, demonically animated sex doll and brings her to Sunday lunch. If you say anything, you are a bigot. He can call the New World Order police and you will spend the rest of your life pending. Pending is when they take you for a crime and kill you and they never update your status to say that we killed this person. You will be pending forever because you spoke against a sex doll coming to Sunday lunch. This is what it means when every abomination becomes legal and is given free reign. A census will come. A census will be taken, says the Lord. Not an ordinary census, but a reckoning of every valuable asset in the land. Everything that a man possesses will end up accounted for as people are forced to declare everything they own to the government, whether they like it or not. These things will happen here, says God. And with time, you will not own anything anymore. Private ownership will be removed. You will live in a state-based system. You will be poor and not free working for an allowance of credits rather than for the benefit of your own sweat, which earns you wealth and liberty. You will be a slave in your own economy, and that will be the law. State power. And so, you understand the work that I am doing here, proclaiming the prophecies of the Lord Jesus Christ, the soon coming King, to a nation that tried to headbutt her master. And so America's greatest nightmare has always been that she will not be free and she will not be fair. Her nemesis, communism, is going to be the end of her. And I hope that you can see the irony of a just God. These are the words of Job. The thing I feared most has come upon me. I'm Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice. God bless you, and until I see you again, goodbye.